Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel for a new video. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Earthworks SR314 vocal handheld microphone. My claim for this microphone is this is one of the best microphones that I've come across for all around versatile content creation. Hopefully I can prove that to you throughout this video. Now without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing I wanna take a look at is the specifications of this microphone. The SR314 features a small diaphragm cardioid condenser capsule. This microphone is machine from stainless steel and it makes the mic itself incredibly durable. It does come in at a weight of 1.5 pounds, which is a little bit heavier than your typical stage microphone. Now, as I said, this is a condenser microphone and that means that it requires 48 volts of phantom power to drive the microphone. The intention of this microphone is to give you a very natural reproduction of your voice, as accurate and as close to your voice as possible. The frequency response of the SR314 is from 20 hertz all the way up to 30 kilohertz. And this mic can handle pressure levels up to to 145 decibels, making this, of course, a great stage microphone. The dimensions of the microphone itself are just over seven inches in length and one and a half inches in width. Comparing those dimensions to like a standard SM58 like I have here, you can see that it's definitely a larger handheld microphone. This mic has an output impedance of 65 ohms. And finally, of course, it features an XLR connection that I'm actually very impressed with how accurate the connection is. It leaves for a very tight, very reliable fit when connecting an XLR cable to the base of this microphone. So so that's it for specifications. Now let's take a look at what actually comes in the box when you buy this guy. Of course, the first thing you're gonna find in the box is the mic itself, and then already attached, you will find this very sleek looking pop filter that is covering the capsule. We're gonna talk in a moment a little bit more about that pop filter and some of the features that it includes in its own design. Outside of that, in the box, you will find a Earthworks branded sleeve that the microphone perfectly fits into. The sleeve is padded, but you don't really need a ton of padding just because of how durable the mic is itself. Like I mentioned earlier, it is stainless steel, like it feels pretty heavy, and it feels very durable in your hand because it's made out of that stainless steel. And last thing in the box is just the mic clip that is attaching this SR314 to the boom stand that I have in this setup currently. If you try to use more of a standard Shure mic clip that works better with you know, your SM57, your SM58, you're gonna find that it will attach on the microphone at the back of the mic like that but it sits fairly high in the clip and if I try and slide this down it will pop out so best just to stick with the earthworks clip that comes in the box when using this guy on a boom stand or on a straight stand or on stage or wherever the application is that you're going to be using it so next we're going to talk about design and the first thing that I want to bring up is just like comparing these two microphones this is the Shure Beta 58A and this is the earthworks SR314 of course what we're talking about in this video this is a standard look right we've seen this mic microphone everywhere forever, the snowball looking microphone that is on most stages across the world at this point. Just looking at the SR314, it has just more of a sleek, modern, newer look to it. Of course, it is a much newer microphone in comparison to the Shure microphone. I just really like the way it stands out. When I saw this microphone for the first time, it popped at me like, wow, what is that? What do I use that for? What's going on here? Clearly, there's a lot to this that I wanted to sort of uncover right away in the microphone. Looking at the grill specifically, this grill was designed by Earthworks with the intention of reducing the amount of foam in the grill, but still providing pop protection. The potential disadvantage and the reason why Earthworks tried to avoid using a lot of foam in their grill is because foam itself can actually filter out high frequencies. And then once you lose the high frequencies, you have to do something later on to get those back. As well as something that Earthworks was trying to achieve with the grill and the design for the 314 was to avoid any unwanted reflections in the capsule. Reflections caused by the grill that happen in some standard stage microphones actually cause what's known as comb filtering. Comb filtering happens when you add a delayed version of a signal back into itself. And this results in destructive interference in the signal. So now that I've taken you through the specifications, we talked about what was in the box and we went over some of the design principles that was put into the SR314. Next thing I wanna take you through is the actual function of this microphone. This mic, as I mentioned at the beginning, originally was designed as a live vocal mic. It works great in live settings because of its tight cardioid polar pattern with frequency response to 90 degrees off axis. Now what this means in the way of actually using the microphone essentially means that I'm going to speak directly into the top of the microphone and then we're going to turn the microphone and as I'm turning the microphone you can hear how the signal is still fairly consistent all the way to the side of the microphone to the 90 degree point. Then you start to lose me from there out. Now I'm talking to the back of the microphone and I'm not even sure if you're picking this up. Uh, the idea is that anything directly behind 
So the idea there is that anything directly behind the microphone, like when I put my voice, the vocal source behind the microphone is getting cut out. This means that if you have like a wedge monitor in front of you and you're on stage, you aren't gonna get a lot of that monitor back into your microphone, which is gonna mean you can increase the gain on this microphone without feedback. Here's a clip from Nam 2019 over on Music Tech. It's another YouTuber. I'll include his channel link and his information in the description below. Here's a quick clip of him interviewing Scott from Earthworks where he actually demonstrates what I would just talk about. So check this out real quick. I've got this same microphone plugged into this wedge and it's actually quite loud. Now it has so much rear rejection that I can just take this microphone and go like this and we get no feedback. Now this concept is super simple, but it is so important in so many various ways inside of content creation. A great example of this is podcasts. If I'm sitting at the table with somebody and we're both speaking into these microphones and we're looking directly at each other, then the microphone is picking up myself talking directly into the top of this capsule and my guest speaking directly into the top of their capsule, but our voices are not being picked up by each other's microphones. Therefore, we have a clean feed of each person's vocals and we can sort of compress and run a chain on those vocals separate from one another, which just is gonna result in better audio quality in your final mix of your podcast. To take that point even a step further, now I know this next example is extreme overkill, but I've been using this microphone to talk to some of my friends on Discord at night when I'm playing video games. I like to run my speakers off my desk with my game sounds and the voices of who I'm speaking with on Discord. I don't always wear headphones in the evening when I'm just chilling because I prefer to just have the speakers on the desk running my audio for the computer. And if this microphone picks up the audio coming out of my speakers, then the people that I'm speaking to on Discord, first of all, will hear themselves as an echo. Second of all, will hear my game sounds. But that doesn't happen with this microphone. They can just hear my voice because the speakers are on the 180 degree point of the rejection for the microphone. So the speakers coming at the mic will not be picked up by the capsule. Now that's something awesome to keep in mind inside content creation, especially when it comes to things like streaming. Because when you're streaming, if you're like me and you have a mechanical keyboard, you got lots of noises going on at the desk, this microphone above the desk will reject what's on on the desk, keeping your keyboard nice and quiet, but keeping your voice amplified and clear for your audience. Another thing I want to mention about this microphone that definitely is more important in live applications, but still is a cool feature and can definitely be used in various other applications inside content creation. And that's that the microphone itself features consistent, and I'm reading this right off the site, consistent distance agnostic low frequency response. So what that, I guess what they're just saying there with that is that I can back away from this microphone and you will not lose the low end in my voice. You will not lose the low end in the source that you're recording. That's pretty cool because when you back away from like your typical stage microphone on stage to control your dynamic, you're going to lose some low end because that's the first thing that drops off when you back away from it. But with this microphone, it's going to keep an even distribution of your frequencies, even at a distance, so you're still preserving the source. Now, despite the fact that this microphone is marketed as a live vocal mic, a lot of the awesome features and functionality that they've packed into this microphone can make it a really great microphone in several other instrument settings as well. And to prove that point, I want to play you two quick clips from a video I found testing out this microphone. Now this video, the credit for this video, these clips goes to Ryan at Creative Sound Lab. He has a YouTube channel. You should check his stuff out. I watch his channel fairly consistently for microphone reviews because he's done a lot of them. I'll include his link in the description below. So the two clips that I played for you, the first one was an acoustic guitar being recorded by this microphone, and I think it sounds pretty fantastic. You could see there on screen that he included the fact that there is nothing on that chain at the time, and then he turns the compressor on, turns it off. And the other example that I thought was really, really cool was he actually used it as a direct center overhead, single mic center overhead for recording a drum set. If you've got some ideas and you want to put this guy directly above your kit, it will preserve the low end in your kit, as we talked about earlier, despite the distance, but then you're going to get a fairly 
really decent mix out of your kit that you can sort of record for either like an IG, quick IG video, maybe you're making a quick TikTok, maybe you're in a band and you've got to do some pre-pro and you have some ideas and you want to record them quickly. This microphone will work in all of those scenarios, at the drum set, at the acoustic guitar. And then in his video, he goes on to actually show it as a closed mic on a snare drum. He uses it as a microphone for a guitar amplifier. So as you can see, because of the features that they packed into this thing, there's so much versatility that you can get in the studio and in the content creation that you're working on at home. In closing up this video, I just want to mention too my own personal opinion about the microphone outside of all that I've sort of presented to you. I switched over this microphone for Lindsay and I's reaction videos on the channel very recently. We've only dropped one video so far where we're actually using these microphones, but I have some edited. And what I found when editing videos using this microphone compared to our old setup where we were using SM57s, I know really not the best microphones for how we were using them, but, but, um, but using this microphone in comparison to those, it's just such a step above. The amount of editing that I'm having to do on my voice in post is really, really reduced using this microphone. So it's just been a really awesome experience using these SR314s. Thank you Earthworks for sending these out. Outside of all of that, I will include a direct link to this microphone. If you at home would like to check it out, you can check that out in the description below. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I really hoped you enjoyed this deep dive into the Earthworks SR314 vocal handheld microphone. If you did, make sure to let me know by hitting the like button. You can connect with me further at my social media pages. They're on the screen for you right now. And then as always in the description down below. If you want to support this channel, you can find a merch link and a Patreon link in the description. Thanks again. And I will see you guys all very soon with something new.